um, criteria of selection. And, um, and so I ended up with the peninsula of the Lancaster in Scotland, the plateau of Rombolds Moor in England, um, the peninsula, uh, well, Evo Peninsula in Ireland, a bunch of peninsula in, uh, in, um, in Spain, and also Mont Vado, which is kind of a mountain in, in the north of Portugal. So I was very interested that they all had very well defined uh, topographical um, limits to, you know, uh, have a nice background to my, to my, uh, to my study areas. I've also developed this um, multi-scalar methodology based on the, the, the different levels of, of, um, of detail that I, that I needed to, that I thought would characterize Atlantic rock art. So I have a very small scale that was dedicated to the motifs, basically, where I was looking not only at the shapes, but also at the way that they were built. Uh, so I figured, for instance, that the cup and rings they're not just cup and rings, there's all sorts of variations. If you look at the rock, they all look the same, but if you look in detail, there's lots of little differences between these cup and ring motifs and the way that they were actually carved. So the carving techniques as well. Um, and, um, and then at a, at a medium kind of scale of analysis, I was interested in looking at these motifs uh, in their wider compositions on the rock surface, but also how they interact with the rock surface because often they take advantage of the natural fissures and other natural elements of the rocks themselves. Um, and so I wanted to know what the pattern in this in relation to that was, but also the rock um, itself, so whether there were carbon half rocks or boulders or uh, you know, if there was any, any particular features of, of the rocks that would um, have brought them to, to choose them to carve. And then um, I have a wider environmental um, scale looking at the wider landscape, which I kind of subdivided. So I usually say that I have a three and a half uh, scale methodology because I wanted to look at the wider picture, so at the peninsulas, but in some cases, some of them are so large that I thought that I'd have to uh, kind of define smaller areas to look at the more immediate surroundings of each other of the rocks. So uh, these are basically my, um, my scale of analysis. So, um, I then organized uh, the data that I was that I was gathering in a relational categorical scheme that was subdivided um, in a number of attributes with, which characterize rock art um, in its many components. So the motifs, rocks, uh, rock types, landscape techniques, behaviors, uh, which then resulted in a very complex system composed of eleven categories subdivided in over three hundred attributes. Um, it does sound like a lot, but it did give me a very good insight into the uh, the rock art of each of these of these regions. So I had a, a very good deal of um, detail. So I, I started by plotting these in a, in a presence absence matrix, which I approached in several stages. So um, I was refining my my approach at at, at a time, introducing more uh, variability with more attributes. So for instance, my first approach would be just the main attributes, so the 11 attributes, and then I would introduce um, a few more, which would characterize classic rock uh, art in, you know, the, um, or how we, uh, in, in, including attributes that normally characterize classic art, and then I, I included all of the, all of the attributes. Um, and this was a very interesting exercise because it started showing me that uh, some of the conclusions that I was bringing from, from my field work, which was, you know, this all looks very similar, but there are some differences between these regions that are very difficult to capture, uh, started to emerge in this, in this system. Which uh, led me to the idea that there was this group of quintessential Atlantic rock art composed of specific characteristics that was traveling across Atlantic Europe, but then developed their own personality. So there were local introductions probably based on the local people's traditions, so the, you know, social and, and cultural backgrounds, that then um, explains small differences. Um, so, okay. so uh, I was now kind of coming up to the idea that um, there was this, there was this, um, so these relations between between these regions, which had been explored previously, roughly, um, through other types of of, um, of material culture, um, but I needed to find out 
more how how that happened and, and, and we need to kind of find a way to um, well pin down those, uh, those those relationships, how they traveled, uh, where from and where to, obviously we don't really know that, but um, yeah. So basically um, I started looking at principles of developing developmental psychology to explain these possibilities of cultural transmission of rock art. Um, these were at the time being explored by one of our colleagues uh, in relation to Paleolithic hand axes and she had really good results and I, I started looking at our rock art and I started figuring that the amount of detail that, was, that, that I could identify in all of the regions could only be explained by a process of intentional teaching that must have been in place um, alongside these um, so interactions, maritime interactions. And so I, I needed to test this, uh, this hypothesis and I started looking at or doing it um, in, uh, with, with correspondence analysis. I was to relate all my data, not having to select anything, but I was having very complex graphs that, that were driving me a little bit insane, to be honest, and I started having to pick out, you know, relations to, to leave out, to, to make it more clear, and I wasn't very happy with that. So this is just relating to two of my study areas. If I was to put all of the fiber on my, all of the fiber was here, you can imagine how, how complicated that was, that all that would be. Um, and so I then moved on to, um, to the, uh, well, I thought that since I was looking at uh, network connections, I thought that maybe network analysis would be a, a good idea to, um, to look into because I was trying to um, come up with an effective and dynamic way to relate all of my data at all the different scales. So I didn't want to necessarily choose uh, any fields to relate with each other. So uh, the data that, um, that I used for this was basically the one that I collected previously, um, organized in the how many categories and how many um, uh, attributes. And uh, this is where Tom comes in and he helped me a lot with this, which I'm very uh, thankful. <clears throat> and uh, basically, we translated this into this, uh, this network composed of, um, or an affiliation network, uh, a two mode affiliation network, yeah. Which was still pretty complex anyway. So, um, to simplify the structure of the network, um, this, uh, the, it was projected in, in, as a one mode uh, network focusing on the, on the nodes referring to the card panels in order to explore the differences and similarities uh, between, between them. So, in this case, two pairs of rocks were connected by one edge. Um, which should hold a relationship of at least uh, one node of the other mode. Um, and, uh, and the different, different edge weights are represented on the fact that it's shared by a specific pair of um, sites. So the analysis of the data set that we did was made through two different methods, both projected as a one mode network. In the first case, we created a relational network of co-presence, uh, which wasn't very useful, as you can see in this, uh, in this verbal. Um, because it was very, it was very dense, um, and so we decided to refine it and then um, apply the. Um, well, actually, before that, so th this verbal. So this verbal, and then refine it, and uh, <clears throat> I came up with this map, which basically shows that. You know, Atlantic rock art is pretty similar in all of the regions because we have almost the same number of attributes being shared by all of all of the uh, all of the uh, of the study areas. Um, but this wasn't so. There wasn't a lot of there were no patterns emerging. This wasn't really telling me uh, much. And so then we refined it a little bit, uh, and to overcome this limitation, we developed the second approach of the network using the domain module modularity, um, which measured the density and the edges within, um, and out, uh, within the groups of nodes, optimizing the relationships and rendering the best possible groupings for the uh, nodes within the network. So strong connections started to emerge and weak links um, also uh, began to show up. Um, and so there was, you know, we, we started getting some similarities and differences. Now, 
Similarly to what happened with the, the present census matrix, I did this in a, in a phased kind of way. And the first data set that we applied this to was what we call the package, which corresponds to the quintessential um, rock art characteristics that I showed you previously. So this is the package. Um, and basically, uh, it shows that it's basically present in all of the regions. So there is no, um, there's no regional logic emerging uh, to it. You can tell that basically the like, rock art is pretty much a global phenomenon looking at this because it is present in all of the regions with the same sort of, of uh, weight. So, and then we started refining this into the, uh, into the other approaches um, and we contrasted the, the, the results of the, uh, of the package with uh, three more renderings of the, net, of the network so each of them was more complex than the previous, um, including more variability at each time. So the first approach uh, included all the main categories without discriminating the attributes. So uh, there were basically 41 attributes that I used, like the presence of carbon rings, um, although I didn't count how many rings uh, they had. And, uh, and we started getting slightly different results. Um, and there was a little patterning starting to emerge as well, which intensifies in the second approach, which you can see. Um, yeah, so that would be the first, the first approach, and that this would be the second. Um, but anyway, so um, we start getting some connection, some relationships that are, are stronger between some of the regions. So the Macros and Eva, for instance, so Scotland and Ireland. Uh, start showing closer relationships. Obviously, um, the regions of Portugal and Spain are quite uh, tight as well. Um, but still, there was no um, strong evidence of, of, of you know this, this regional personality that I was uh, that I was expecting to find. Um, and um, and then finally, we included um, all of the uh, all of the um, of the attributes, which are 300 plus, uh, and we found a clear regional character for Atlantic Book Art, uh, which was trans uh, translated into these groups of, of panels that were particularly similar between each other. Um, so this is the same network that we saw with the furball, but it's now uh, refined and it enabled the identification of very distinct communities um, of sites. So uh, what we can see is that there are very strong relationships between some of the regions. We can see that some of the regions have a very uh, strong regional character, such as Rumble's more is the English one. Um, there are some connections between that one and, for instance, Ebro Peninsula in, in, uh, in Ireland, which is surprising because if you visit the two, uh, they are quite different, certainly in terms of motifs. But the advantage is that by using all the other attributes, we are characterizing it beyond its morphological um, um, sort of characters. Um, and also, again, Iberia, the two regions in Iberia almost merge um, into one. So really, what uh, the use of, of, of this network analysis was quite good, because one, it allowed me to uh, well, demonstrate my hypothesis, so that was quite good to start with. Um, also, the phase approach that that I used, or that we used, um, allowed for a very good characterization of Atlantic rock art. Um, and then there was effectively this idea that, you know, because there were such strong relationships between these regions, um, the idea that it was deliberately taught is really not that um, strange. Uh, and also, I was then able to identify uh, differences and similarities between the regions, so I, I have a rough idea of why they are different and what are the presence of each of, of, of each of these um, sorry the preferences in each of these of these uh, regions. And also, it, it was also a way to incorporate this Atlantic rock art into a wider narrative of, of the history of this of this region, uh, especially considering that rock art is really kept to uh, to one side um, and. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.